So to finish your project, you need some sort of smoke effect. You would figure it out yourself, except for the fact that for the last 48 hours, non-stop, you've been on your computer, playing video games. Your eyes are red, your vision blurred, and your focus non-existent. By the way, the project deadline is in two hours. I can help you out, but I need you to pay close attention. Fire up Blender, add a plane, and place it in front of the camera. Create a new material for the plane. Then switch over to the shading workspace. Here, the easiest way to add a specific note is to open the Add menu with Shift A, then use the search field to find that node. For example, the Voronoi Texture node, alongside these other five, will be the centerpiece of our smoke effect. Here, the output of the Texture Coordinate node is taken in and distorted by the combination of the Noise Texture and Mix nodes, then handed over to the Voronoi node. Finally, the Map Range node and the Power node refine the final output for a more realistic smoke effect. Normally, the Voronoi node generates a cellular, honeycomb-like pattern. However, with its input coordinates distorted, the Voronoi node now creates a smoke-like texture that works well for our purpose. Put together, these nodes create the smoke texture we're after. They also contain a few parameters that let us adjust some qualities of the smoke. In particular, the Noise Texture node lets us set the size of the spirals of the smoke. We can use this to create smoke effect for small and large scale scenes. With the Mix node, we can adjust the influence of the Noise Texture. Use this to imply high or low turbulence within the smoke. The Voronoi Texture node lets us set the contrast between the individual wisps of smoke. We can use this to change the level of detail, making the smoke more vivid or more hazy. Finally, with the Map Range node and the Power node, we can fine-tune the thickness of the smoke. Use these to generate a thin, subtle smoke overlay, or conversely, a thick, heavy smoke effect. We now have our smoke texture, but we still need to animate it. And all the while, the project deadline is getting close. You're worried. You want to know how many more nodes we need to get this over with. But try to focus, because I need you to listen close to this next part. Yes, we want to animate the smoke. But what we need is a seamless animation, which can loop over and over without breaking continuity. To make this happen, add a value node alongside a Map Range node, and two Vector Rotate nodes. Here, the first Rotate node gradually changes the texture, giving the smoke a natural evolving quality, while the second Rotate node makes the smoke rise. This second rotate node is also what enables seamless animation because a complete 360 degree revolution ends exactly where it started, at zero degrees. We can animate this rotation with the help of the value node and the map range node. On the value node, type in the tag sign followed by the term frame. On the map range node, enter the start and end frames along with the start and end rotations. Now play the animation. The result should be seamless, giving the illusion of endless rising smoke. The clock is ticking. The project deadline draws near. You glance at the time and you wonder if there's a way to make the smoke gradually disappear as it rises. We can do this if you quickly bring in these nodes and connect them to the rest of the setup.
The only parameters here are those on the map range node, which let us adjust the start and end of the transition. These final notes add the finishing touch to our smoke effect. We're done. The deadline is close, but you have enough time to render out a smoke overlay, place it on top of the scene, and submit your project. This brings us to the end of this tutorial, where I show a snapshot of the entire node setup and point out the key parameters. Now it's your turn to let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.